Welcome in to the Tuesday edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast, August 29th. Full moon is tomorrow. Hi, everybody. Thomas Miller, thanks so much for joining us. Let's pick this little chart apart. Tomorrow's full moon is at 9.35 p.m. It's in Pisces. So let's get set up for that right off the bat. The Aquarian moon goes void of course late tonight, 11.05 p.m. Eastern Time. And now we're back into those longer voids, of course. You remember when Pluto was right on the cusp? Well, now Pluto's a whopping two and a quarter degrees off of that cusp (laughs) of Aquarius. So we have today a 10-hour, almost 11-hour void, of course. The moon enters Pisces tomorrow, Wednesday, at five minutes before 10 Eastern Time a.m. Now, you get a little bit of a break, and I know this is like, oh, I'm, so much is loaded on us that we could use it. Here's the good news. Between now and Sunday, we don't have any significant direct aspects in the sky. We follow the moon from Aquarius today, Pisces tomorrow, Aries on Friday, Taurus on Sunday. And by the way, you can follow that in Kristen Lawhead's lunar calendar. If you haven't picked that up, it's on the funastrology.com website in the freebies section. Go pick that up, and she'll be updating that every month based on new moon to new moon. How cool. Totally free to download. So we follow the moon for the next four or five days, and we don't have any other direct aspects in the sky the rest of this week. So the full moon, because it's later tomorrow night, which will make some viewing great if you don't have clouds over your head, 9.35 p.m. Eastern, just perfect. Wow. So we'll do that tomorrow. We'll also talk about the Pisces connection. But today I thought we would spend some time talking about the moon's proximity to Saturn during this second full moon of August and this last of the four supermoons. Now, as we're releasing this, the moon is still in Aquarius, but it is within about five to six degrees of Saturn. So tomorrow morning, it enters Pisces there at just shy of 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. Then it crosses over Saturn during the day. That exact conjunction is at 3.30 p.m. And then for the full moon, when, of course, the moon is opposite the sun exactly, it will be about four degrees past Saturn. 7 degrees, 25 minutes in Pisces. Saturn's at 3 degrees. So there's the technical structure of this full moon relative to Saturn. But this also brings the sun into the picture. Now, the sun is separating from that direct opposition to Saturn on Saturday, but the sun is opposite Saturn, and Mars is opposite Neptune. Now, both are pulling away from each other faster than normal because one of the two planets in each case is in retrograde. Saturn is going backwards in Pisces, while the Moon is going forward in Virgo, and Neptune is going backward in Pisces, as Mars is going forward in Libra. And doing a correction here, too, I think yesterday I mentioned there were seven planets. You know, when you get up really early in the morning and you're trying to get your motor going and everything, sometimes brain and mouth don't connect. There are six planets in retrograde. Mars is also direct, so... Mars, the Sun, the Moon, and then we're flip-flopping between Venus and Jupiter this coming weekend. Six planets in retrograde. Still a quorum. Now, what can we get out of this full moon, especially related to the Moon and Saturn? Let's just focus on that piece right now. We'll talk about the Pisces piece tomorrow. Well, first question you know around here, which side of the coin are you on? I'm seeing some gloom and doom around this full moon. Because, look, when people see the moon and Saturn together, they instantly think that this is going to be karmic death and destruction, right? Well, I would say this, that if the universe is trying to get your attention, here around this full moon is a great opportunity to do that. Anytime Saturn conjoins or opposes or squares a luminary, you have to at least get prepared. You want to know. But look at what's being represented here. This is a watery full moon, first of all. The moon, water, Pisces, water. Robert and I recorded an episode that will be out soon in the next couple of weeks on Old Soul, New Soul about decanates and duads. We even talked about it relative to transits like this. So what is the decanate? It's the first decanate, seven degrees for the moon. So that's Pisces ruled by Neptune, more water. Then we have an earthy component to this as well, because Saturn obviously is an earth planet. It rules an earth sign, Capricorn. Also Aquarius, but we're going to stay with this Earth theme. 
Robert and I also, in that episode, talked about duads, the two-and-a-half degree divisions of signs. The third duad is Taurus, Earth. So see, that really brings this full moon for me right inside. This is about our soul. This is about us. This is about grounding. This is not fire and air, which certainly would be more combustive. So then we have to think about how are we going to interact with Saturn. Let me throw you some terminology that we normally don't use. I like what David Cochran, who is the designer of the Kepler software system in Sirius, in his vibrational astrology, he says that planets only have one characteristic. So he doesn't have multiple flavors of a planet. And in vibrational astrology, Saturn is all about one thing, structure. Well, I keep the Astrology Bible in the booth here. I rarely use it anymore, but I just thought to open it up, and I'm glad I did, because Judy Hall says her tagline for Saturn is The Way Shower. There's a popular Christian song out now, Way Maker. Same idea, The Way Shower. It's a lamp unto our feet, a light to our path. When Saturn gets grumpy, what's happening is we're wandering off in the weeds. It's saying there's copperheads and poison ivy over there. Come back over here. No, I don't want to. Bam! Upside the head. Or take it away from you like you do with a child. Time out. Then Saturn gets a bad rap. We can be really good at making a way shower wrong for having the love to bring us on our best path. Let's look at a couple of others. Boundaries. Oh, anybody need boundaries (laughs) right now? Yeah, ding, ding, ding. Ring the bell. How about control? And I would say to that, who's controlling what? Are you controlling your circumstances or are your circumstances controlling you? These are all things we can think about during the next couple of days of this full moon. Another descriptor, conservation. Ooh, I love these. Wouldn't that be important now? Conserving our resources, taking better care of our planet, just doing a little something. Pick up a piece of plastic and put it in a recycle bin. And wink up in the sky when you do. Here's another one on the high side of the timeline. Resilience. Two more. How about responsibility and being a mentor? That full circle loop when the student becomes the teacher. And then I'll close with Steve Forrest's, You're climbing a mountain. Just make sure it's the right mountain. So we have this water, earth, full moon with those descriptors. You see where I'm going? Bring it in. Bring it home. Think on those things and develop those characteristics in your life. Ah, I love astrology. See you tomorrow for You Know What.